All right, chat. Hello? Hello? We're going to do a little... It's a pit stop, okay? So here's what it is. I'm going to go get this PlayStation 4. And I'm going to race myself. We're going to see if I can do the PlayStation 4 hot swap before Lonely Trout Man finishes. Three, two... One, start. on the screen first. Time. He's done it. He's done it. Three minutes and 54 seconds. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh. But there's no sound. You <laughs> okay? I couldn't tell there was. Back in, you go like. 
this. Here, we still, we still got a minute. Nothing to fear. Our time? Is it working? It's still not working, dude. I was actually having this problem with the... Uh... Oh, it's just really low. Yo, let's go. The dream's real. Time? <laughs> He's done it. Crank it, dude. And you know what you're getting out of this. Is it a bounty for F1 2018? Earth Defense Force 5? Trials Rising? It's the Grand Tour, brother. It's long awaited return to the show for 30 minutes. That's right. Most recent trophy. The boys are back. Jeremy Clarkson, James May, and Jobbert Rowney Jr. Yeah, that, that's it. Uh, Daryl Hammond. I forgot. I forgot his name. Temporarily. The Lotus Evora. Yo, dude. <laughs> Are you telling me? The Grand Tour has Twitch Prime bounty in in built into the game? It's got Twitch Prime loot? Top right, dude. If you didn't have the game before, the incentive of the Lotus Evora. I mean, I, don't forget about the perpetrator. All right, obviously we're gonna be playing single player here. And I'm moving on to season three. Season one and two have already done quite a lot of. Put me on this one. I didn't see what, Cha uh, what Kate did yesterday. But, but put me on Chinese food for thought here. Play from start, I'm ready. I have no idea what to expect. That's right, Kate did Urus. I forgot about that. Hold on, you gotta... The intro, I, I've seen it so many times, it's committed to memory. Drowned out speech, by the way. Coming up in this week's show. A supercar is dismantled for no reason. A man with no shirt on. Pardon me, sir? And my whole tongue is wrapped up in intestine. My whole tongue is wrapped up in intestine. Those are the highlights. Those are the best bits. Really I are. can't but notice there was very little driving involved there. Over here, it makes my job pretty easy. We tend to think that at 360,000 pounds, a Rolls-Royce Phantom is quite expensive. But this week, the Grand Tour is focusing mostly on China. And over there, things are a bit different. As recently as the 1980s, people here would lie awake at night, dreaming of having enough money to buy a mule. Well, quit rubbing it in, dude. Not everybody was born in the Empire of Queen Victoria. Dream of being able to buy a honky. Excuse me, sir. In Chinese, honky means the red flag, the symbol of communism. But there's nothing at all communistical about this monster's price tag. Which is eight hundred and eighty thousand pounds. Top right, by the way. The interior is an exquisite work of art with rosewood paneling and cream leather. 
The dashboard and center console are fully digital. Well, they're not fully There's digital. Did you see the gear the shift? There's handles and gold and sunflowers everywhere else. Despite its villainous presence, Excuse me, Jeremy. Is mad. So, I called May and Hammond, and we came up with an idea. Let's crash two of them into each other at high speed while making a joke about wonton noodles. If you are a Chinese businessman or businessman woman and you want a car that reflects your status, you don't need to spend 880,000 pounds. You can simply pop over to Europe and buy a Mercedes S-Class like this one. And even though this is the six liter V12, it costs me just 8,800 pounds. In other words, you could have a hundred of these for the price of a honky. What is that license plate, man? At this point, my colleague Richard Hammond arrived in something or other. What is that? This is a Cadillac STS, and you can shut up. I'm pretty sure my anything? grandpa drove that car. We were then interrupted by the arrival of Clarkson in a BMW. Ooh, I see you've bought the long car. Yours is long as well. Are you two being from the 1970s? No, they're long wheelbase. 3.4 litres V12. It's appearing before your eyes. How can a German car go? Are you sure it's a real one? Was it parked in the sea when you bought it? Let's Damn not it. get bogged down with the oxidisation of my car. Because a lot of Chinese people, as we know... Oh, here we go. These days, if Chinese people are going to come to the UK and buy Western soap and Western frogs, why would they not buy Western cars when they're there? Yeah, because you can't, you can't buy these cars secondhand over here. No, they're not. This vintage isn't available here. No, no. And what we're saying is you can buy one of these for a lot less than... Oh, well, you, you talked me out of it. A lot, lot less. <laughs> Originally, I was going to blow uh, 1.23 Canadian million dollars on a car that has an insulting name. Now that you've told me there are other cars for cheaper, I've started to rethink my decision. centers around Chongqing where teenagers can learn to drive away from the traffic to us however it looked like a racetrack which made it perfect for an ingenious handling test that i just thought of now to do this we're going to use drones like this one which have been fitted with flamethrowers they actually use these in china for clearing um litter that's got stuck on overhead power cables i don't believe that right. So, how are we going to use... I would like to see a, 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 a citation needed. Good question. Each of our cars has, as you can see, been fitted with three chains of firecrackers. One on the bonnet, one on the roof, one on the boot lid. Okay? So, you drive around a special course here while you're attacked by the... Uh, Dude, I picked a good episode. And then, you score a point when you've finished for every one of the targets that haven't gone off. I have no idea. I will plug in my controller. Do not fear. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, so what... I, I, so I'm just going to drive? If that... Um, you know... When you finish, for every one of the targets that haven't gone off... I think I uh, my problem is I didn't hit the brakes. Go! So don't get hit by the fire. Run for it, Marty. Oh, you ready? You son of a gun. He slowed down at the last possible moment. Oh my God. Don't uh, wait it out. Wait it out. Wait it out. Watch out. I don't care, dude. I'll take a silver. You guys have been watching Mouth play this. You should be used to silvers by now. Oh, jeez. Dude, book it. You got no acceleration on this thing. Okay, I mean, bronze. Oh, Jesus Christ. He's dead.
Whatever, that's a lap. Just send me. A little embarrassing, but also not a great representation of what it means to drive for real. Oh my god. The first one. He's too good, man. Oh, he's done it. I told you, all you gotta do, why retry? If they're gonna let me retry with a superior automobile, regardless, we got nothing to worry about here. This is an incoming gold. Book it, dude. Sorry, it doesn't hand. I'm used to driving the, you know, F1 caliber vehicles around Monaco. The downforce in this BMW is is got me a little spooked right now. It's not sticking to the corners as well as I would have expected. Oh, no! I got the toilet award. I got the toilet metal. Fire everywhere! Oh god! Bandits at ten o'clock. That'll have alarmed him. It will have alarmed him, Sam, yeah. You know dogs don't like fire. No, they hate it. Feel like I would get that joke if I watched more of the show. Alright, so honestly. I don't care. Dude, give me the toilet. See if I care. I'm going to set a new record lap time. This challenge is not representative of the driving skills required. Use the walls. Never touch the brake. The track is built to actually send you around its perimeter. What did I tell you? And then you set a new record hot lap. Oh, jeez. What do you do at Monaco? Usually hit simulate race. And then go on to play uh, the Canadian Grand Prix instead because the track is wider and thus more enjoyable. Yes, 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 yes. What? Hang on. Yeah. That was a totally useless test. I like this guy already. The other day from a Chinese car manufacturer called Neo. And they said, we have built a blisteringly fast all-electric supercar. And would one of you like to try it out you think they called yeah, the now, company that because it's the sound the car makes when it goes by you it goes meow richard hammond said that he didn't think he was the man for the job however it turned out that the car was only available for one day and unfortunately on that day i had the boiler man coming around yep and i had a dental appointment D dentist dental yep. appointment yeah yep so guess what What's happening? Here it is. It's called the EP9. And it's pretty clear that this is no Nissan Leaf. Because a Leaf doesn't have giant head restraints to stop G forces from. Yeah, and you also don't look like an idiot driving it around downtown. And that's just the start. What I have here is a comparison between this Neo EP9 and the Rimac Concept One, in which I had my I remember that from the earlier episode. Tumble down a Swiss mountain side. So, in the Rimac Concept One, power 1,207 brake horsepower. In this Neo, 1,341 brake horsepower. 
power to weight in the Rimac is 652. How do you see your right blind spot? Uh, when you're in a car like this, you just give her. If you hit somebody, that's what the roll cage is for. So, no pressure then. Right, the high voltage system is active. So here goes. To launch, it's got to be in drive. Left foot on brake, right foot mash the throttle, right hand hold that back for one, two, three, four, five. Come off the brake. <laughs> oh my god. It's like the Neil deGrasse Tyson clip. Yo! Oh, no. You gotta work on the handling a little bit. That's okay, though. If only they'd put the outside walls of the track a little bit closer. I could just use those to bounce off. For example. Like this. If you turn there, you're a coward. Just let the game do the hard work for you. Come on, come on, come on. Oh. Like what did I tell you? Something else about which I have bad memories. This is a bad place. However, there is some good news for people like me. The brakes. Whoa! <laughs> everything back where it should be my eyes have come forward my lungs are on the front again oh go flip now if you want to experience this phenomenal speed for yourself you will need two things first of all a lot of money because this costs 1.15 million pounds secondly a racetrack. It's not street legal. Because it works like that Ferrari FXX where you buy the car, they deliver it to a track for you along with a support team. You drive it, crap yourself, then they take it away and hose it out for you. Since it's an electric car, you'll be wondering about range. Not really. Honestly, it seems pretty track, impractical to begin with. Those batteries out pretty quickly. However, on the plus side, they only take 45 minutes to charge. On the miner's side, you have to take the batteries out to do it. And as they weigh 317 kilograms each, you won't be doing that on your own. Well, it is a bit more of a faff than say. This car is starting to seem pretty impractical. However, if you're an electric petrol head and you're tempted by the Neo, you might be interested to know that it's not short of pedigree. There's evidence that the people behind this thing really know what they're doing. For starters, the outfit that makes the EP9 also runs a Formula E team. <laughs> it's not even Formula 2, dude. In normal championship in 2015. And until yeah, call me when they can beat Williams. The itself held a lap record around the Nürburgring. With an astonishing time of 6 minutes, 45.9 seconds. Which means it isn't just about going fast in a straight line. Well, that's good. Next time they put my grocery store at the other end of the Nürburgring, this will become a practical option. Next time they open a Safeway at the end of the Nordschleife, I'll be sure to take it around for a spin. Grip, grip. I have to get my maximum G's as high as possible. So here's what you do. You're going to throw it in. You're going to hit him with a quick handbrake or something like this. That should count, honestly. Okay, here we go. You know, get her, get her around. No, no, that's not a wide enough corner for me to do this. Okay, this one is gonna have to work. Here we go. Three, two, one. 
Honestly, hold on a second. I forgot what button handbrake is. Drift is square. Okay. This is it. Slow in, fast out. Need that kind of car, brother. Last chance. I knew it. Guaranteed. What does that mean? There's no doubt that as a piece of engineering, the Neo is deeply impressive. And it's slingshot! <laughs> but what I love about it most is that thanks to its phenomenal grip, I could hammer it round our track all day and still be the right way up. And from me... I get it. There is no higher compliment. Because he got in that accident. Yo, <laughs> this guy on the right, he's a very eager viewer. An electric car as long as I live. Why not? Because... Why on earth would I want to employ a team of men and buy a forklift every time I need to go anywhere? Yeah, that's all very well, but a lot of people are more enlightened than you, including me and Baxter Hammond. Yes. Tell me, what are the... How does it compare with the Rimac? I was well, interested. Th yes, they are, sure. The Neo, it's just... The Neo is just more of everything. It's more power, more grip, more speed. I, don't, I have to say, that looked painfully fast, that it car. Is. I mean... It is really? astonishingly fast, but it is a novelty, an amazing, powerful fast. The old guy's but right. A novelty, nevertheless. And we should make it absolutely clear that you can't drive... Take one of the wheels off, off and then try to drive it around the Nürburgring. But you can, that's what makes it so amazing. And there's a new Rimac coming out soon that'll have more than 1,900 horsepower. But imagine the size of the internal combustion engine you would need to make... Put a Hemi in a shopping cart. Would be, be massive, that's why. The future of supercars like that is electric. It Play is. through area. It is. It just is. It is. It is. It is. That's the way it's going to go. It's the way it is going. Okay, then. Let's find out how fast your beloved Neo goes around the Ebola drum. All right. I remember this. It's a callback. It's called the Ebola drone because the track is shaped like the Ebola virus, Chad. Didn't you read up on the suggested readings before I started the stream? It, as per my earlier email, I gotta be honest, the, the downforce is not where it needs to be on this. It's, you're never gonna be able to compete. Why is she laughing? This is a very serious situation. Oh, Jesus! Actually, uh, didn't know you could do that one. I've never seen... <laughs> I've done some crashes in this game. I've never seen one so bad the car exploded. We still barely got silver. You know what? I I'd like to retry, please. We can do better. How fast your beloved Neo goes around the Ebola drone. Goes around the Ebola drone. Good job. You gotta use that drift button a little bit more religiously. That's your, there's your problem. I refuse to tap the brakes on a straight. That's just... That's sacrilege. There you go. That's the good stuff. Okay, now hit the brakes on this one. You don't want to fly into outer space. So you're saying there's a chance. She's done it. I knew it. So exciting, those noises. I like the noise. 
noises. Well, they can't like those. No, they're hot. There's a whole new set of noises, you pillock. OK. It's the future. OK, let's see how fast you're elegantly entitled N10, no, Neo, Neo. EP9. Yes. Got round, shall we? Here we go. <clears throat> Top ten. Come on. Uh, excuse me, I did it in 55 seconds. Come on. Come on. I should be first by like 20 seconds. That, that is faster. Faster than the Aston Martin Vulcan. You're absolutely right, Hammond. It is a very impressive car, and it is faster than a Vulcan. But it's slower than the petrol-powered McLaren Senna, which is road legal. So that is petrol one, Yes. electricity zero. All right, don't do that face. Don't do that face. No, no the comment. Smoke face. Not the smoke face. I don't... It's clean coal, baby. Just move it on quick. Yes, uh, in this show, we are explaining to the people of China that they don't need to waste huge sums of money on new luxury cars when they could buy something used from Europe for a lot less. We got back on the road in our fire-damaged cars, with James still moaning about his temperature issue. Uh, keep right, except a pass. is now so broken that it's permanently hot. <laughs> what are you wearing, my man? Press every auto <laughs> I decided there was only one thing I could do about this. Ignore him. Jesus. Crap. They're actually building another motorway with viaducts and tunnels on the other side of the valley. Not one motorway. Why do you need another one over there? Still, all these motorways did mean we could prove that our cars work well as long-distance cruisers. No big deal. Just, uh, yeah, give me the Mercedes. Just, uh, three dudes driving three separate cars. No offense, uh, Mother Earth. I mean, I guess that's kind of the spirit of the show, but still. Send him, dude. Sorry, 100% focus. Why does this car from the 1970s have NOS? Don't worry about it, cuz. Oh, Jesus! What am I doing? I'm telling you. They recently added more crashes. However, Still a gold medal, by the way. USS Norman Schwarzkopf. Oh, God. It's dying. Thank God I didn't pick the Cadillac. What's happened? Loads of warnings came on. <laughs> St. Patrick's Day. I made it to this off ramp, and now it's it died. Oh dear. Not sure my jump leads are going to get that going, are they? No. Oh look. Oh That's dear. That's really gone bang, isn't it? There's oil coming out everywhere. Do you know the number for the emergency services? No, I don't. Do you know how to say my Cadillac's broken down? Do you know what junction you're at? No. Oh dear. No, neither do I. Do you? No, I don't know. Come on, we've got a long way to go. Eventually, we, well, two of us arrived Hostel at the three. location we'd selected. It's known as the 24. Yeah, don't just leave the car there. Push it into like a UNESCO World Heritage Site or something first before you abandon it. Maybe just drop it in the middle of a freshwater lake. To ferry US military equipment to China. And it hasn't really been maintained since. So the surface is loose and potholed. And it looked like it should be a right laugh. Cheers. This was actually part of the road that li the only road that linked the then capital of China with India and Burma. Yeah, well before that all the supplies that came into China had to be flown over the Himalayas, which was incredibly dangerous in the Yeah, it's especially hard in the Middle so Ages as well. Sorry to, sorry to interrupt. You see this stupid thing. Well never mind that. Look what he's driving. Why is that Hammond? 
I guess the Cadillac's definitely broken. <laughs> nice. <coughs> Check out my Fulu. Why have you got that? Well, Be honest, Chet. Do you think if you like really <laughs> gave it, you could just push that car well, over? My telephone translation device at the toll booth worked to a degree, to this extent. What? A hundred percent? Look, I've got wheels, three of them. <laughs> anyway, listen, here's what we're doing. Yeah. It's a test of speed, because we are against the clock, bear that in mind, okay? Okay. And durability at the same time. So you've got to get up this road, which goes all the way up there. You could not okay, deadlift that possible, car. And keep that would be absurd. Piece in the process. Richard and I decided that James. Try me? <laughs> Do you go, go get one? Oh. oh, you look exactly like a racing driver, apart from visually. It's a racing clown. Can we just get on with it? It's oh, is he? <laughs> he's been taken down over down by the singularity, dude. Down. It's a small risk from being hit by a stone. Is a large risk of dying from suffocation. Right. Anything else we want to say to him? Yes. Let's go. take some time and prepare mentally. Mm. And really think about this. Have you visualized the course? No. Okay. He looks quite cross. He does. Yeah. Three, two, one, go. Yeah, yeah. Go. All right. What's the problem? Two minutes and 35 seconds? I don't know how long the course is, but that seems extremely easy. That's a lot of time. Yo, it's the pan flute intro. So here's the thing, you just use the wall. Oh, Jesus. I'm still being honest with you. I think if you just use the wall, you're going to be fine. But you don't want to use the wall that sends you over the Himalayas. You just want to use the walls that keep you on the level. Like this one, for example. Yeah, that cliff came out of nowhere. Yes, this is that famous road in San Francisco. The one that Scott Lang, a.k.a. Ant-Man, is driven down by his friend Luis when he's uh, released from San Quentin Penitentiary at the start of 2015's landmark film Ant-Man. That was a tricky one. We get it, you saw Ant-Man recently? Yeah, but like... You don't seem to get it, dude. Dude, why don't they just like, burrow a hole straight through the friggin' mountain? There's too many curves. It's too steep. Just to use a diamond pickaxe. Burrow a tunnel straight through. It's not that hard. Steve could do it. Rubbish. Rubbish, by the way. That's all right. I can live with the bronze on this one. Uh, it's, I could have recovered from that one. They're not going to toilet me. They don't have the sack. Next, it was my turn. Again, huh? Right, I'm attaching the wobbly headed symbol of capitalism here to bring me good fortune on this perilous test. It's all right. Now that we know the track, we're going to be fine. He's actually wearing the Tony Stark suit as well. You know, this reminds me of my favorite 2015 Marvel film. It takes place in the glorious, sunny San Francisco, California. 
early on in the movie, Louise, an ex-convict played by the inimitable Michael Pena, picks up Paul Rudd's Scott Lang in a 40 Connell line van and they go cruising through the hills. Oh, that's the racing line. We hit the apex. The real apex legends. Okay, that time we might have gotten a little rubbing his racing, brother. Michael Pena's a Scientologist. That's okay, brother. I'm not asking him to watch my kids. I just want him to keep telling uh, funny stories in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. What he does with his personal time and how he wastes his money is up to him. Hey. Baskin Robbins always finds out. <laughs> That's a quote. I don't know if you guys know that. It's from the 2015 film Ant Man. Greg Turkington playing the manager of the local Baskin Robbins reprimands Scott Lang while simultaneously demonstrating a little bit of reverence he has for the crimes that forced him to work at the ice cream parlor in the first place. That was 2015? It's true. June, maybe? I don't know. Somewhere in there. It's the summer of 2015. Probably 2015 is one of their greatest top five summer movies from 2015. Just let me go, dude. Put me in the three-wheeler, at least. If anybody in the NLSS became a Scientologist, who would it be? Um, yeah. Daniel definitely seems like the first answer. You overdid it, didn't you? <laughs> so I've won that. Here, put me in the three wheel. I'm ready. Three, two, one, go. Oh, come on. I'm not right. Okay, here I go. No, I don't think Malf would become a Scientologist. I don't think Josh would become a Scientologist either. I don't think Dan would become a Scientologist either, just to be fair. This song, I don't know about this one, dude. Mathis Games, Mathis is too cynical to become a Scientologist. I mean that in the nicest way possible. Excuse me, I did not do that. Oh, God. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Is he okay? <laughs> did, was, did, was did, he a, just, did he just crash it? So was that a crash or did he just disappear behind the... He has, look, he's gone off there. Uh, so there we are. I'm afraid that Richard Hammond's luck has finally run out. And it's with deep regret <laughs> James and I must now announce the untimely demise of... All right. Not again. How does he do it? I don't know. Well, on that terrible disappointment, back to the tent. Do you think they just got him out of the car and then, like, drop-kicked it down the side of the mountain for the bit? Because I won that. No, you didn't. I did. I was the fastest, and it was supposed they to be. They drop kicked it with him in the it. Entire way up the hill. And then he deadlifted oh, yeah. it off the edge, of I course. Did quite a big crash at the end there. I just I thought we could 
There's nothing particularly remarkable about that, is there? No. I mean, why would we... <laughs> the fact is, the reason you crashed, well, obviously you're incompetent, but also because your Cadillac broke down and your Mercedes was too humid, so that means the winner is definitely, of the whole thing, the BMW 750 no, no. What? Actually, no. To be fair, the real winner of the whole thing was our brilliant idea to sell second-hand limos to the Chinese. No, he's absolutely right about that, because it makes them happy and it helps us with our balance of payments. Yeah. Everybody wins. Mm. It was a good idea, yes. except for one tiny detail. You see, this programme is shown in every single country in the world, except one. North Korea. <laughs> Which one? China. Ah. Mm. So this entire show has been a total waste of time. It's an hour of your life you'll never get back. Chad, don't and listen. Terrible disappointment. It's time to end. Next week, I'm happy to say, we're back in the groove. We're in Scotland, and I get an Alfa Romeo GTV6. Make me very happy. See you then. Take care. Good night. Good night. All righty. That's the grand tour. It's just that easy, brother. Plus, now we got the PS4 hooked up in here again. There's something about the... There's something about the Grand Tour, you know? Is it the best racing game on the planet? Most people would probably take issue with that. But the mix of Mystery Science Theater 3000 style live action content and absurdist driving, it, it gets me every time. I always leave with a smile on my face going, Meh, you got me again. You got me again. Hello, Melf. Hello. <laughs> How's it going? Hello. Hello. Oh, that was so fast. Hello. What? No, it's, I mean, it's nothing. I'm in a ship. You landing, bro? Oh. Oh, I have an instruction.